It's easiest maybe, which might be at their stomachs. If those are things that you're interested in, then this is a survey we'd like you to fill out. Basically, the uh, plumbing at the Daniel's Kitchen will be finished this week, electric next week. Praise the Lord for the $2,400 that was received over the, uh, July. So uh, that was a real blessing to be able to finish the project or to work towards finishing the project. And I'm glancing around the room. Um, I don't have eagle eyes. I'm looking for my sister. There she is. If uh, my sister-in-law, Lori Jones, could stand up for just a moment. I know, right? So if you want to peek around, if you don't know Lori, there she is. She's going to wave her hand and just about us. There she is. See her waving her hand? Uh, Lori owned a restaurant in Stanton for a number of years. She has agreed to uh, work as the Daniel's Kitchen Manager. And uh, she was voted in by the committee there. So thank you very much, Lori. Sorry to embarrass you. Brother-in-law's prerogative, I guess. Um, but uh, please take a look at that questionnaire and get that filled out because if you're interested in helping, uh, that would be really, really great. And I'd like to invite Nancy to come on up for now. So. How many of you know Ryan Williams? Raise your hand. Our church members know Ryan Williams. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> Um, Ryan Williams was one of my first students when I um, came to this church and was the youth Sabbath school leader. And he has since grown up, had uh, gotten married, and we've been praying for him throughout this summer. Um, we found out that he was very sick and had to go to the hospital on a Sabbath morning. And our Sabbath school class was praying specifically that uh, God would give the doctors wisdom. Well, we found out the next week that he actually um, had been diagnosed, um, he has leukemia. But God has been blessing, and he has been responding well to the treatment. And in the meantime, his wife was expecting a little one. And so we just want you to know God is good. Um, if you're going to go ahead and show the picture, of the very first picture. Oh, that's not the first one. Oh, dear. Oh, that's the last one. Oh, dear. Wait. Ugh. Wait, we're getting there. There's eight pictures, and we've started the back. Keep going. You don't have four more pictures? Oh, dear. Well, next Sabbath. Next Sabbath, four more pictures. The very first picture is one that would cause you to praise the Lord. It is Ryan and his wife, Katie, all dressed up um, in... Um, uh, Oh, what do they wear in the hospital when they're in scrubs, right? Yeah, and she and they're holding little Tessa Joy. She was born in the operating room, and he had finished his, his um, treatment for leukemia on Monday, and she was born Thursday, and he was able to be there. So Ryan and Katie have a happy little girl named Tessa Joy. And we, as, a, as an extended member of our family, we want to give them a long distance. Oh, Christy, thank you. See, thank you. I appreciate it. Not Katie, and that's why I asked you her name, because I had it wrong. Christy, Ryan and Christy. Okay, we got that now. Ryan and Christy Williams, thank you. Um, we want to give them a long distance bridal shower. Brides and babies talked about it, and we said, you know what? we would like to be able to be part of this happy time. And so um, if you'll look in your bulletin, the details are there. We want to send um, cards. Um, Cheryl is going to go visit in a couple weeks, and then um, Steve. And so we would like to just send all the cards with them. And so if you want to, the, the details are here, hand them to myself or Joni Rogers, Lisa, Garcia, Coral Connor. Um, and we'll show you the other pictures next week. So to, re, to let you, because this is a, a baby shower where we won't get to see the baby unless we go to California. So here's our chance to see the baby for this special baby shower. So thank you. If you have any questions, please um, contact one of Brides and Babies that are listed here. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I want to just remind you of uh, another event that's happening today. It's not listed on this side of your church bulletin, but it is on the other side of the church bulletin. 
that at the elementary school tonight, they will be having a potluck followed by a Vesper slash prayer service. And during that prayer service, they go around to the different classrooms and they uh, pray in the different classrooms, asking the Lord to bless our elementary school and bless what takes place there. So we'd like to encourage you to come. If the, uh, uh, if the Spirit moves you, that'd be awesome to have you there. It'd be a blessing for all. Also, I'm to go through the first readings this morning. Uh, if you'll notice in the center part of your bulletin, there are first readings there. The first one uh, is Aaron Cruz from the Metro Church into the Cedar Lake Church. I also am adding something that's not written in your bulletin here, and that is a uh, first reading that Aaron has, uh, would be uh, taking the personal ministries leader position here in this church that's currently vacant. So um, that's not written in here, but just know that... Uh, if Aaron is accepted by this church and voted in as a member, then uh, we are looking for him to also be the personal ministry's leader pending that uh, membership transfer. Also a transfer in for Richard and Carol. You see them there from the Alma Church coming into the, uh, Edmore, or into the Cedar Lake Church. Thank you very much. And then also two outs for uh, Daniel and Laura Jean-Francois and also another out for Mark Howard, both of those to the Edmore Church. So those are first readings. So next Sabbath, we'll read them again and uh, take a vote on those. Um, my notes say to flip the page. Okay. And then last of all I have for you is today, the reason why I told you it's such a high Sabbath is we've got some baptisms today. That is always a thrilling blessing, isn't it? All right. That was a weak amen. Amen? amen. That's a little stronger. You're getting there. Good. We're working you up a little. Um, but that church, that baptism, will take place right after the children's story, so you'll be expecting it. Thank you very much, and have a blessed Sabbath day. Good morning, Heavenly Daddy. Father, we ask that you would be in our hearts today. Speak the words that we need to hear. Surround us with your family. Make us your child. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church family. It's so great to be back after a summer away from y'all. Our first hymn is going to be 343. So I ask that you join me in singing that. 343.
Now please sing with me 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. That's really what we're doing right now is praising God through music. Our opening hymn is hymn number 302, Deeper Yet. I ask that you please stand as we sing this one.
seated. This week's uh, emphasis is on uh, Michigan Advanced Partners. How many of you like to be on a team versus working alone, maybe? A good team, a team that has uh, got good leaders and active. Well, that's what uh, our, how our finances work. It's teamwork. Everybody doing their part. The uh, last year, well, actually, right today, I just learned something about Michigan Advanced Partners. You all, rem you all have been exposed to this, and you know that it helps build schools and buildings and things like this. I didn't realize that some of those funds are helping keep some of these students here in our school. Yeah, that's kind of close to home, isn't it? I didn't realize that the uh, Project Assist was funded, or partially at least funded, from the MAP program. Last year, the church where this young lady lived rallied to make, a, make her potential shine forth. She was able to come here to school comes from a family that was inconsistent, non-Christian home, but she was happy to have the chance to come here to school. And uh, nobody realized the impact that it would have on her life. She grew spiritually by leaps and bounds, and her first year was baptized at the end of the year as a member of the local church. During a summer, she shared her faith in a megabook program. She became a class officer she shares her faith with friends on campuses. Her older sister now looks up to her, and her family makes comments on how she has changed. That's a success story, isn't it? And probably one person here knows who that is, and I don't, but that's okay. Uh, we, we have all helped in giving to the MAP program to help fund things like this. That is exciting. Here we bow our heads. Dear Father, we thank you for these revelations into what our funds can do and helping and just our, our teamwork, our consistency, uh, each one giving their part. We thank you for that and that thank you for you that you gave yourself for us. We have so much to be thankful for. We praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Time for our children's story. And being a child has no age limits, so enjoy. Children, go and get your baskets and from the back or in the front and uh, do what you always do. Catch everybody. Right. Did you know that at Cedar Lake Church, they have developed a tradition over the last few years? And that tradition is to have Mr. Mendez or I do children's story the first Sabbath of every school year. So we get to do children's story today. And have I got something for you. Now, I need two volunteers. I need, let me see. We'll do a Noah and um, Rebecca. Would you be willing to volunteer? All right. Anoa and Rebecca, thank you so much for volunteering. Okay, now, let's see. I have something in this bag. Here, I'll give this to Mr. Mendez. All righty. 
I have dollar bill. Do you trust me? Yes. Yes, you trust me? Do you trust that I will give you this money with no strings attached? Do you trust whoa, that whoa, I will give? Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, hold on, hold on one second. All right, I need to talk to my wife. Um, I'm, I'm telling children's stories. I, right? I know, but I thought you were going to use fake money. It's Sabbath. I can't do fake money on Sabbath. Okay. Um, you see, I'm going to teach your salary, and <laughs> and I could really use that. You see, I haven't been to the Target store yet and been to the dollar section. Do you know how many paper clips I can buy? Yeah, but it's, it's children's story time. Um, this is for them. Okay, but we shouldn't give it away. I think that they should do something for it. If I have to work for it, they need to work for it. So don't worry, I got this. All right, ladies. Uh, yes, she's going to give you a dollar bill. Pretty good, huh? There's something you need to do to get it, okay? Uh, let's see, 50 push-ups, 50 push-ups, right? That should work, right guys? 50 push-ups, you could get a dollar bill. How does that sound? No, I'm good. No? Okay. Uh, let's see, what else? What about you stand on your head during the whole sermon? Yeah. <laughs> See, the pastor won't mind because his wife's a teacher, so he understands teacher salary. So he won't mind if you do that. All right? Stand on your head. No. It's a whole dollar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I need one more. Uh, I need some help. Something that they should do for a dollar. A dollar. What should they do? What are you? Be nice to their siblings for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Oh, be nice to their siblings for the rest okay, of the Okay, yeah, lives. You've, you've taken up too much time here. Okay, yeah. I have a dollar for well, each of you. Do you trust me to give this to you with no strings attached? Yes, you do, or no, you don't? Yes, you do? All right, well, this dollar bill, in this case, represents the free gift of salvation that we get to claim through baptism. Isabella and Lisette have decided to accept that free gift from God with no strings attached except that they touch him, just like you guys get your dollar bills with no strings attached except that you trusted me. And we're going to have the baptism here. You can go sit down. We're going to have the baptism here in just a few minutes. And after baptism, those of you who are 12 and under will also get your free gift from Mr. Mendez. So let's turn around. All right, as they head towards the, the back to get ready for their baptism, I was wondering if I could get a volunteer for prayer. Okay, all right. What we're going to do is we're going to bow our heads, close our eyes, make sure you stay up here because after the baptism, you're going to get a special gift from me as well, okay? All right, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day, and thank you for this time, and thank you that we have our time together at this church. We bless you to have this Thanks for um, baptism to bless our hearts. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. What a wonderful day it is. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to go through a few vows. This is like the best decision, and you guys are making it. And I, and I met with you, and I know that when I talk about Jesus and you talk about Jesus you have a smile and that tells me a lot about your connection to Jesus so we have some wedding vows in a sense you're saying to Jesus I love you we have a few points on the screen that will come up I'll read them to you and if you agree you say I do I believe in one God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I do. You can respond by saying, 
I accept the death of Jesus in my place. I do. I accept Jesus as my personal risen Savior. I do. I accept Christ as my righteous high priest. I do. Amen. I believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. I do. Amen. I accept God's Ten Commandments. I am looking forward to Christ's second coming. I do. Amen. I accept that God has made me a light to the world. I do. Amen. I believe God gives gifts through the Holy Spirit. What was the first gift he gave mankind through the Holy Spirit? Art. He gave art. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Anyways, that was added in there including the gift of prophecy. I do. Amen. I believe in church organization. And I want to support it in every way possible. I do. Amen. I believe that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I do. I know and understand the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I do. Amen. I accept the New Testament teaching on baptism. I do. Amen. I accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy. I do. Amen. I want to be part of the family of God in this local congregation. I do. Amen. Now we've got some really fun, fun church business to do. Pending their baptism, would anybody who's a member of this local congregation like to make a motion that Isabel and Lassette would become members of this local congregation. I'm kind of looking that we got a, we got a first and we got a second. Amen. 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 And then the rest of the church family. Amen. 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 So pending your baptism. You know what that means? That you have a voice in the church. And I want you to, to learn how to use that voice. Did you know your voice in the local congregation, your vote, is as important as my vote. Did you know that? But you're the pastor. But I only have one vote. And you have a vote. So you, God has gifted you with the ability to help guide and lead the church. And I want you guys to believe that and know that. Because I want our church to be young person driven, young, have young people in leadership. It's, that's important to us. Isn't that important to us? Yes. Is it? Yes. All right, all right. Well, you guys can go to the back, just back here. And... It's a special day for them. Their grandfather is going to officiate the baptism. And that is wonderful. So any friends and family could maybe get a little closer to see this wonderful event. Well, I have to say that this is a, a real <clears throat> blessing to be able to come and officiate in the baptism of our granddaughters. And uh, in just a moment, they'll be here. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> well, said, are you going to be the first one? Let me get you down off of this first. I'm going to move it this way. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we thought she might be just a little short for this, so... Uh, we wanted her to stand up a little higher. Anyhow, Lisette, <clears throat> I heard you affirming the baptismal vows this morning, and uh, I am very pleased as your grandfather to be able to officiate at your baptism. You know, 
probably, oh, some 30-some years ago, I baptized your mother. And uh, we had the privilege of uh, burying her in the, in the waters of baptism. And so this morning, we're going to have that privilege with you as well, as well as with Isabella. And uh, so this morning, I'd just like to have uh, her grandparents stand, one there, one there, and uh, <coughs> family members. We're glad to have you with us this morning, Laura Lee and Gabe. I call them that, Mr. Mendez. And uh, I wonder, there probably are some other people that are supporting uh, this, the, these two girls in their baptism, and I would think that probably their teachers would be among that group. So, uh, Mrs. Williams, I'm not sure where you are, but uh, if you would stand. <clears throat> are there other uh, personnel in the school that uh, might be supporting them as well? I don't know their names, but uh, I'm sure that uh, they would uh, like to, to stay. Mrs. Gramlin. Who? Mrs. Gramlin. Mrs. Gramlin, is that what I heard? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> All right. You know, it's always important to have a, a support group for young people. They, they, uh, they don't go by themselves, do they? They, they grew up with, in a family, and the family is their church. And so this morning, there are probably some Sabbath school teachers that uh, ought to be among this group as well. Would you like to stand? Okay, I'm not sure whether you, where you are, but I'd, uh, there we go. Is that somebody on the other end of the, of the room? All right. Uh, <clears throat> there are good friends of these girls that I don't know. Thank you for standing. You can re remain standing, yes. Uh, good friends of these girls that would like to stand and just say, yes, we want to support them too. All right. Oh, no friends? Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, we got friends right here beside them. And they're probably candidates for baptism too, Pastor. So we're looking forward to that. I, I know I, I was in the school yesterday and I asked how many people, uh, how many of the children had been baptized, and there were a good number of them that are yet uh, to, to take that step. And so uh, I'm sure that they are supporting them there, here this morning as well. All right. Well, listen, I think it's time for us to go ahead with the baptism uh, the set, and so I'm going to have you turn this way just a little bit, okay? So you can face your friends. And uh, because... Because you love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, and it's your desire to serve him and to be a, a witness to his love for you, to those about you, as your grandfather, I find it a real privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay. So oh, yeah. so so There's a happy girl. All right. All right. You know, I used to do this. We lived in Brazil for uh, about 12 years. And uh, though their mother was not baptized in Brazil, her, there were their uncles were baptized in, in Brazil. And uh, sometimes we do it in a swimming pool, sometimes we do it in a river, sometimes we do it in a lake. And once in a while, they would had a baptismal tank in the church where we'd hold a baptism. And so this morning, Isabella, because you love Jesus and you want to give your life to him and walk in the way that he walked and be ready for him to come, he's coming soon, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> I'd like to present to you the two newest members of the Cedar Lake Academy Church. 
Isabella and Lisette Mendez. Okay. Now, the Bible says that after Jesus was baptized, they prayed and the Holy Spirit descended as a dove upon him. We know that the Holy God, Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would be our helper too. And so this morning, we need the Holy Spirit, don't we? And let's just bow our heads in prayer and ask that Jesus will send his Holy Spirit as he has promised. Heavenly Father, this morning we are so thankful for the decision that Isabella and Lisette have made to follow you as their savior from sin. And though we know that uh, Satan doesn't give up, that he'll still tempt them, that there will be times when they will probably fall, we want them to know that you are there to rescue them, that we have a savior, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so may they ever remember that you are close by them to hear their confession and to forgive, just as you did when you were here on earth. And so now we ask that the Holy Spirit will be present in this room as we continue to worship you this morning. May your Spirit speak to our hearts and draw us close to you. And may many of their friends also desire to follow you in baptism. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. What a wonderful opportunity to see God at work. And I'd like to extend a similar invitation. Is there anybody here who's made a decision for baptism and is preparing for it? Anyone here is who's preparing for a baptism? Can I see anyone's hands? Anyone ever have made a decision for baptism? Are you preparing to get baptized, Nancy? Anyone, by the showing of their hand, would like to start preparing for baptism? Just showing by, by your hand, be like, I praise God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else that would like to start preparing for baptism? What my goal is in the church is to help people connect to Christ. Help people learn the wonder of Jesus. And I want to, I invite Aaron up here because I think he has the same goal. Aaron is a, he's a pastor in the Michigan Conference and he's, he's over the school. But his, his pastoral calling goes beyond the school. So when you see Aaron as chaplain, we see him as pastor. Aaron, do you have a few words you want to share? I would like to make the, the same appeal, but direct it especially towards the students. And uh, I did share this a bit last night during Vespers, but know that I'm always there for you along with Pastor Gibbs. If you want to make that decision, maybe you don't want to just raise your hand this morning, but you want to think about it more. And as you attend the, throughout the school year and Bible class and other religious activities or whatever, I'm available in my office to always talk. And if you ever want to make that decision towards baptism, I would love to begin studying with you. Pastor Gibbs would begin, would love, we would both love to work with you. And uh, I'm also excited on behalf of the church, uh, pending my acceptance next Sabbath, to work with the personal ministries and to unite the best that I can, the students to be workers in this church as well, and for us all to work together as a church family to win souls for God's kingdom. Amen. Let's just have a, a little word of prayer because it's such a good day. Father, you saw the hand that indicated that they love you. And there's, there's hearts and minds all in this congregation that are saying the same thing. We love you. So, Father, thank you for letting us see the wonder of baptism, the wonder of decision, the wonder of recommitment. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
What a morning. Oh, beautiful. It's just a rainy day outside. Sunny in here, isn't it? Amen. We got the sun of, of Jesus' light, God. Um, just, just, a, just a wonderful morning. It's time for our church family prayer. Um, church, family, and prayer. All three meaningful words. Um, this is for all of us, for you to make your own requests, as you can any time, of course, not just now, but uh, this is uh, a time for us to grow closer to, to God and be thankful and joyous and worship. So we kneel as far as we possibly can. Our Father God in heaven, we have come here to worship you, to praise you, and to glorify your name. Lord, we do need your help to continue those motives for every moment and every day of our lives. And we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us and to change our tendencies maybe to help us to grow closer to you every moment of every day. We thank you that we are able to come here, that we have the opportunity to come here, and that it's legal, and, and that we are, can gather together like this. So many people in the world don't have the same conveniences, privileges, and opportunities, and we ask you to be with them in a special way. Give them your assurance and your love, just as you do for us here. We have people within our membership and our congregation, our families, that may have not been able to come for one reason or another, and we ask you to send your Holy Spirit out to them, to give them a special Sabbath experience, to help them to know that you are close to them right now, wherever they are. We ask you to be with the school, the church school, the academy, and many other of your schools, dear Father. Uh, help us all to be part of your learning and your school. We ask you to be with Pastor Gibbs today as he speaks. Give him the Holy Spirit to, to give the words that each of us need. Help us to have a gift of understanding so that we can understand what you want each of us to hear as we listen. We thank you, Father, so much for the plan of salvation, for your part. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice and the assurance that that gives us that you are there for us and that you care beyond what we can imagine. We praise you, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is found in Philippians 2, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, if there is any conclusion, conclusion in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through self, selfish ambition, ambition or consent. Sense. But in lowliness of mind, let each 
a stem others better than himself. But each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation, taking the form of the bond of the bond servant in coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted, exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is to the glory of the Father. We're done. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church family. This is for all the honor and glory to God.
Amen and amen. Have you been blessed already? Amen. 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 Well, Isabella and Lisette, we, we have a, a gift for you. Um, we'll give it to you after church service in, in back there. Um, we'll have them back there so you guys can greet them, give them a hug, high five, say welcome home, welcome to the family. And uh, what a wonderful day. Amen. Wonderful day. And so today is a little different than the normal Sabbath. Normally I, I give you some handout. But today is a little different because we're going to go out. The handout's up here. Please forgive me. It's so good to be in Cedar Lake. Like I'm just, I'm just really enjoying the community. I'm really enjoying all sides of the community. It's just, it tickles me pink. It really does. Are you supposed to say that at the pulpit? Father, thank you for the call to come today. Thank you for letting us embrace your son through his word. Lord, I think for the students, it's been a, a roller coaster of adjustments. I ask that you'd be with them as they try to get a grip on this new school year. Lord, walk with them wherever they are, however they think. Be close to them. May this day be a day of rest, of restoration. And Lord, the, those of us who are here all the time, we need you too. We need your word. We have hard knocks and trials. We need you to speak very clearly to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm a man that likes a lot of different hobbies. Perhaps my favorite hobby is the hobby that I'm doing. And so, as of lately in Michigan, disc golf has been a thing that I do. I, I just got into mountain biking. But there is a hobby that I absolutely love, but it's not really conducive to Michigan. That is scuba diving. Scuba diving, I, was, I worked in Guam and in Australia. I was able to scuba dive in both places. Wonderful. Anyone who's, who has, I don't know how to say it in its proper, scuba, scuba, scuba dove? Scuba dived? Honey, help me. Scuba dive, past tense, whatever. <laughs> the English kids are like, oh my, this pastor. But you get it, right? That's why I married an English teacher. Um, I love it. You're in a whole different environment. It's amazing. We went snorkeling at night in Guam. The things that come out at night are so strange. Totally different. But we don't really want to do it in Michigan. What is Challenger Deep? Does anyone know what Challenger Deep is? Have you heard of it? Challenger Deep. Challenger Deep is the known deepest part of the ocean. Why is it called Challenger Deep? Finding Challenger Deep. In the 1800s, there's a ship, HMS Challenger. And it, it went, I think it was around four years, it, it went around the world. And one of their jobs was to plumb the depth of the ocean. Because then, or back then, they believed that the ocean floor was flat. And then as they were plumbing the ocean floor near Guam, they found it went past the normal two-mile mark. And it went, it went past the three-mile mark. And they kept with the rope 
with iron weights. It went to four miles. It went to five miles. And it was a, a note in a journal, but it took the science people by storm because there is this insatiable desire to search for the unknown. And in the 1800s, the unknown was what's on the bottom of the ocean. There was a theory that there was nothing at the bottom of the ocean. Nothing could live. And then this is the HMS Challenger boat. I went far and long to get this photo of the boat. And so then, 70 years later, we have the invention of sonar. And sonar was used kind of really, what made it really popular is finding submarines. But then after World War II, they found out that sonar could, could kind of measure the depth of the ocean. It goes something like this. Beep. Four feet. That's how it goes. But this was in a boat, and that's how they did it. A guy had a big horn. Beep. And then he'd listen to the echo. Not really. So they would measure the, measure the bottom of the ocean. And so then they had this wild idea. Let's send a man down there. And they built this, this weird submarine. And let's see if we can... Right here is where the people stay. This is all the system to keep it floating and buoyant and sinking and all that good stuff. Because normally they would take a thing like this and attach it to a cable. And they would just throw you overboard and then they would haul you back up. And this thing went down and down and down and down. It was two men in that. It was Picard and Walsh, these two men. And as they're going down, when you get to the deepest part, it's like a thousand pounds of pressure pushing on you at all sides. They actually did a, a little science experiment where they had a styrofoam head. They put it in a pressure tank that symbolized Challenger deep pressure. And it was like the head shrunk because it, it puts pressure on all sides equally. So it screw up this, that styrofoam. It just takes the air right out. And the head was like significantly two-thirds smaller. And so if Walsh and Picard decided to go outside for a swim, not a good day. And as they were going down and down and down, they had these two plates of acrylic glass, plexiglass. And the first one, it kind of broke, shattered. And they looked at each other because it echoed all over that chamber. You could just imagine the acoustics in that ball echoed all over that. And then... They looked at each other like, should we keep going? But there's an insatiable desire to keep going. They went to the bottom, and they, and they saw different kinds of fish. They saw a flat fish at the bottom. You could put Mount Everest at the bottom of the trench, and it wouldn't surface the water. That's how big it is. So this is a picture of them inside this metal bubble. This is Walsh and Picard. They found it. They, were, they went to the deepest known part of the earth. But it's, it's still, they still have questions and they still wonder. But let's go beyond Challenger Deep. Beyond Challenger Deep, I believe that, yes, man has this great desire to, to know the unknown, but we're going to be looking through angel eyes for a moment. We're going to use some sanctified imagination to tell this story, and we're going to be looking at it through angel eyes. So bear with me. The musings of angels. In John chapter 1, and the Word talks about, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word made all things. And so the first noise that I heard was, my messenger son, open your eyes. And I open my eyes, and I see my hands, I see my arms. And he says, spread your wings. And I spread my wings. And he says, fly. I take a look at my creator, Jesus. He looks lovely. And he, that first swoop of the wings just felt so freeing. And I got to fly around, and he says, you're going to be my messenger around the universe. Amen. Oh, man, what a wonderful day. 
And I, I see that there's other angels that he has created. And they're all around and they all give glory to God as, as creator, as Jesus and commander and Lord. And then Isaiah 6 gives us a glimpse of an angel seeing Jesus on the throne. And, they, and the angels say, holy, holy, holy. Why do they say holy, holy, holy? It's because of when Jesus is on that throne. There's a glory, there's a radiance that, that is oh so beautiful. It's, it's almost so, it's too much and I, and I can't, I have to turn my head away because it, being in the awesome presence, it's okay just to be there with my eyes closed. I love my commander and creator and Lord, Jesus Christ. But then, ages later, I had the worst, the worst feeling that I've ever had. I didn't know that my heart was capable of feeling such, such emptiness when I saw my friends ally themselves with the arch deceiver. And, I, and, I, and, and my emotions, it was like I was losing my friends. And I, could, and I just, the, it wasn't just me. It was every single angel brother that we had all felt this way. But we saw our commander, and he was respectable. He was in charge. He knew what he was doing. We kept our allegiance. And something that gave us joy during this time, let's turn to Job 38. Job 38. Here in verse, verse 7, when the morning star is sang together, talking about angels, when I was able to see God fashion the earth and he makes, he makes the land and he makes the trees and by the power of his voice, things come up. Mountains are formed, rivers are fashioned, and they, and they go, and then he goes into the deep, and he makes these creatures that glow in the dark. And when I see this, I can't help but sing. And all the angels sing because of the power of God. It was amazing. And then, and then news spread rapidly that our friends... We we're so excited to have friends take, because we lost so many. We we're so excited that God was making more friends. And then we heard, we heard the news that they decided to take their stand with the enemy. That same pit of sorrow that filled our hearts once before, filled it, filled it again. Friends, gone. Loved ones, gone. And we looked to Jesus. We looked to Jesus. And we asked, what is he going to do? And there was a council of peace between the Father and the Son. And they were... In, and there, there was intense moments we could tell because the light would get bright and we could tell and it was... And then the Council of Peace was ended. Jesus came and he came to talk to the congregation like you are a congregation. He came to talk to the congregation of angels and I was there. And, and it, I could see on his face, I could see that he had sorrow. I could see that his heart was breaking. I could see his pain. I could see his tears. And I, was, I, I didn't know what to expect. But as he started describing what was happening, as he was talking, his countenance changed a little bit. It seemed like there was light at the end of the tunnel. And he goes on and he says, there is hope for the lost race. How? How? How is there hope? We're all wondering in our mind, how can this be? And he says, if one goes down there and lives with them, yes, that's Satan's 
Satan's ground lives there. If one lives there and, and endures every single temptation and lives a life that is going accordance to the Father's will 100%, if one does that, if one does that, then, not only that, if one does that and lives and suffers and dies, for the wages of sin is death. In order to cover those who have the wages of sin, one who is perfect can cover the angel say, I will do that, commander-in-chief. I will do that. He says, no. It needs to be the one who gave them life. That was, that was a hard to swallow. I understood where he was going. He was saying that he, the creator, the one who made me, the one who gave me wings, the one who said fly, he was going to go down. He was going to go down and live. And at this point, we didn't realize. We did not realize what mankind is capable of doing when they're following the arch deceiver. We didn't realize the violence and the crime and the, and the, and the terribleness. It, at that moment, it was too much to think about our commander in chief becoming a human. We could not grasp that. It was all in the back of our mind as time played out. And then, the day happened. Jesus, he stepped down. He stepped down from his throne. He says, it is time. The time is fulfilled. Prophecies are at hand. And he lowers his divine garments. He folds them away. And he, he steps down and down and down and watch him. And he enters into a womb. There he is, housed in his creation. And not only that, this has been 4,000 years of hereditary sin affecting the human race. And there he is, helpless. His life is being sustained by a sinner. His life is being nourished by someone who has fallen to unrighteousness. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12, speaking of the story of the gospel, it says, things which angels desire to look into. Why do they desire to look into it? Because they have a fascination of how deep Jesus will go beyond challenger void, challenger deep. Check this quote out. Angels marvel, marvel. Angels marvel as with intense interest they watch the Son of God descending step by step the path of humiliation. Both the redeemed and the unfallen beings will find in the cross of Christ their science and their song. Both of them. We're going to go to a verse that I believe is the first verse of this song. The first verse of this song. This is in Philippians chapter 2, 6 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, 6, well, it's 5 through 11. And 6 through 11 is actually an early Christian hymn that was sung in the churches in Paul's day. So in the middle of his letter, he embeds a song. I believe this is the first song of the verse that we'll be singing in eternity. Adopt. This is from, this is from the Christian Standard Bible, and it, this is a unique Bible because whenever there's poetry, it indents it. And this section in the Christian Standard Bible is indented, indicating it is a song. It is a hymn. Adopt the same attitude. We know it as let this mind be in you. Adopt 
the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And he found in appearance, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I believe that, what we just read, is the first song that will be the song for eternity. Just the first. Because when we've been there 500 years, we're going to be adding to our understanding of the wonder of the cross, so we'll be adding to the verses that we sing. After a thousand years, that song will get longer because the depth of understanding the cross cannot be exhausted. And so we'll be adding verses to that song for eternity. And the more verses that we add to it, the more wonder we see of Jesus. And we have the privilege today to start singing that song in hearts of faith. Amen. This is a wonderful privilege that God has given us. So it's the Christ hymn. That's what it's known in all the commentaries. It's the Christ hymn. And they all have these thoughts. But it's interesting. It's unique. Because the placement of the Christ hymn is embedded into the unity part of the Bible of, of Philippians. There's the unity in the church just before. If you go to Philippians chapter 2. If you go to Philippians chapter 2, we're going to read. Oh, man. This, I love this. Philippians chapter 2, and he says, right, and I think it's chapter 2, Philippians 2, 2, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And then he puts this, this song there. Then he goes to the other side. Let's go to the other side. Let's read 14 through... 16, do all things without complaining and disputing that you, may be, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God. Being coming children of God means being united in one family. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, beholding or holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. So both sections are, Paul's like, I want you to be united. Sing the song. I want you to be united. The motivation for unity is found in this hymn. And it says, if we go back one, it says right here. Okay. At, at the conclusion of the song, therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee. When it says every knee, what does that mean? Every knee that's ever been created should bow of those in heaven, unfallen world, of those on earth, ma mankind, and those under the earth, the fallen. That every tongue should confess Jesus Christ is Lord. So if this song is going to keep unity for the ceaseless ages of eternity, sin will not rise again because we know the song. Sin won't happen again. Affliction won't rise a second time because we sing the song. Because the song talks about one who came down, who ascended beyond challenger deep to show his love for the universe. We sing that song that song teaches us sin won't happen again. If it's going to keep peace and unity 
for the ceaseless ages of eternity. There is power to keep peace and unity here. We can be united. And it doesn't matter the age, generation gap. We can be united. Amen. I figured I'd get more than that. But we'll take it. A couple more quotes. One more verse. Then we land the plane. Who can measure the love of God? Angels can't comprehend it beyond challenger deep. It is to them a depth of mystery that they cannot fathom. Angels marvel at the divine love manifested for fallen men, but men themselves remain indifferent and unimpressed. Few respond to the love of God. Few appreciate the marvelous love of Christ in his life of suffering, in his death of shame. Let's go back to the musing of angels. They see their commander go lower and lower. You know when, when the submarine was going down and down and down to challenge your deep? You get to, the, you get to the sunlight zone. You get to the twilight zone. You get to the dark zone. You get to the abyss zone. You get to... The dark zone. They see Jesus go down and down. And they get to the dark zone where light can't penetrate. There he is hanging on the cross. He can't see hope beyond the, beyond the tomb. They see him there. And he's doing it. Why is he doing it? He's doing it because he loves mankind. He loves us. Amen. Divine love has been stirred to its unfathomable depths for the sake of of men and angels marvel to behold in the recipients of so great love a mere surface gratitude does that speak to your heart it speaks to my heart angels marvel at man's shallow appreciation of the love of god now we could say we could say we could try to argue with the angels, right? We could be like, "Well, you were there. You saw. I mean, right when you were created, you beheld your Creator. You saw Him sit on the throne. You saw the glory. You saw the wonder. You saw everything. You saw the rebellion. You saw how Jesus took care of it. You saw Him create the worlds and trees and bees and you's and me's. Everything. And then and then you saw Him." You saw Jesus die on the cross. Of course, you're going to understand the love of God, but we can't. We could argue that, couldn't we? But we all know. We all know. If we're not lying to ourselves, we felt the pull. We felt the tug. We know that God is real. We can try to deceive ourselves and convince ourselves, but we know in the silence of silence, when we're alone in our bed and God whispers to our heart, you know, you know that God is real. If you're honest with yourself, and that's all I'm asking you to do, is be honest with yourself. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. God pours himself out. What a, I mean, when he poured himself out, it was at such a height that we can't even see the top. He pours himself out to the bottom where we can't even see the bottom. He pours himself out. When I was in... Eskenab, I met this man who listened to Strong Tower Radio. He heard the Sabbath. He was so excited. I mean, basically, he's like, baptize me now. I know everything. I'm convinced of everything. The cautious little pastor than I am. I have to like, go through all these steps, but I could have baptized him right instantly. It would have been fine because his heart was turned to Jesus. And he just jumped through the steps because he was converted and he was willing to do that. But as I met with, I met with his, his girlfriend whom they lived together and we talked about marriage and they wanted to get married and they got married and we talked, talked to, the, talked to uh, Terry about, about, you know, the Lord and she just didn't have a mind for it. She was, just, she, she was studying law and she, was, and she was a deep thinker and she just didn't understand what the big deal was. A year goes by, it's on Facebook, what she wrote. I have a confession. I was informed today that I have found my first love, 
Jesus. It seems to be true. Since I first had my dreams where the Lord came to me, I can't get enough of him. When I am not at work, I am reading the Bible, studying the Bible, and asking lots of questions. One book I have read that leads me on the journey is below, which was Desire of Ages. It has helped me understand the Bible more. I recommend this book to anyone who wants to have a better understanding. And then following her Facebook feed afterwards, she had the love of God poured out into her heart. She accepted it. I couldn't do it. I tried in all my clever pastor ways. But God does it. Amen. 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 I pray for the Mendez family that God will just pour his love into your family and to those beautiful daughters that they will be wonders for Jesus in these last days. I pray for this church that we can receive the love of God and, and we, can, we can understand that some people just need time to grow instead of saying no to them. We need to be pouring love into people. I mean, not the mamby pamby kind of stuff, but the true love that God pours out. Let's learn from our angel friends that we marvel at the wonder of Jesus. Are you willing to say, I want to be honest with God, and I want to be able to sing that song for eternity? Are you willing to say that? Amen, amen, amen. We're going to sing 249, praise him, praise him. 249. Please stand with me as we sing this hymn of response. 249. Sing a song for eternity. Let's set our hearts on Jesus just now. Father, help us understand the deepness beyond challenger deep of the love that you have for humanity. Lord, seeming like I'm blind, I accept that love. I accept the journey that you have for me. And Lord, help me go through the struggles of today and tomorrow, knowing that deep love will guide me through. 
One indicated that they want to go the direction of baptism today. He knows who he is. I know who he is. And I ask that you'll bless him. There have been others who had that thought, but didn't voice it just yet. Lord, give them a bear hug. Love them. Help them to know that that is a good thought. And Lord, we need encouragement. We need to share this song with everybody around us. At work, at school, wherever we are, may we sing this song in how we live our life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.